This is Matt Yasa demonstrating another tube technique, the solid color blowout. In the last video, we were checking out the coil pot technique to use to make some colored tubing. This time we'll be doing the solid color blowout. I'm starting out here by thickening up and flaring out this tubing with my jacks. Now the jacks is a traditional glass blowing tool. It allows you to flare the tubing open, flatten it out on the paddle on the back, and also shape it on the paddle like I'm doing here. And you'll see I have a nice funnel shape now. A larger funnel can help the blowing out process, but it can make the gathering process a little more difficult, you know, as you're trying to gather up larger coils or a larger sphere in this case. I'm using a rod holder in my right hand. It's not really a necessary tool. It just makes things just a little bit quicker. You could just melt a clear rod on the end to act like a little punty instead of the rod holder, but you'd have to make sure it's on the right axis. If your punties and blow tubes are off axis, then the rest of your project is gonna be off. In this case, I'm just gathering up the same colored glass, so it doesn't really matter. If I was using different colors, then it'd probably cause a problem. I was checking my shop for some more blue and I found a couple more rods here. I'm kind of running low on blue. Now I left the stickers on. Normally I would take them off before I melt them down. But for this video, I thought it'd be cool to show you what would happen. And now I'm not too worried about the paper part of those stickers, more about the glue, the residue that's left over. Because I always recommend to clean the glass to help prevent any imperfections showing up. Now the paper on the other hand just burns up completely into carbon so it's really less to worry about. You know there's really not a lot that can survive a flame like this, especially if it's organic. But now that that's off I'm going to start gathering it up on the end of the rod and gather it back. And that's just because if I would heat up the middle where it's connected, then the weight of the rod would cause it to slump very quickly. But then once it becomes a sphere, I'll tilt it up just a little bit. And then as it tries to fall towards gravity, it falls into that rod and it just maintains a good stability. And now that I have that melted back towards the other gathers, I can start melting that entire piece in to make a solid sphere of blue glass. And now I'm gonna heat it up very, very hot and puff really hard into it, which will start to push an air pocket into the back of the gather where the blow tube's connected. And I'll keep heating it up and repeating this process to slowly push that air pocket through the entire piece of glass which at that point, it would be hollow. Also, normally when you're blowing out a bubble, you would wanna wait about four or five seconds for the heat to radiate through the bubble. In this case, with a solid color blowout, you wanna start blowing immediately. Just because that glass is so thick that it's very, very difficult to expand it. Now I'll heat it back up and contract it back down and blow it out again to make sure that the walls have a nice even thickness all the way around. And with a technique like this, you'll have to do that process a few times to make sure it's nice and even. Whereas with a tube, you can get away with less of that work because it's halfway into a hollow shape already. So some nice controlled puffs and even rotation to keep it from slumping. And I'm gonna put those claw grabbers on and blow out a little hole to open it up. And sometimes when I'm working on a project, I will change the overall plan of what it will be depending on how it's turning out midway. So for example, if I have a marble that might have a kind of a bad side, I might just flatten that side out and turn it into a paperweight. Or for animals, you know, a frog might turn into a lizard or a bird might turn into a fish, <laughs> just depending on what the shapes are looking like. And that's just to save time to having to work it into exactly what you wanted. You're more just going with the flow of the process. So I went ahead and zoomed in the camera and attached on a didinium lens, which will eliminate the sodium flare and give us a really great look of what's going on. 
And this time I'll be using blue Stardust from Tag Glass. It's a cobalt blue with a lot of sparkle in it. And you'll notice I'm keeping the rod in the same place in the flame while I move the tubing around to apply the glass. And that's because I need a nice even and consistent heat on that rod in order to melt it. Now they do create a lot of different variations and shades of cobalt blue. It's a great color to start out on to practice. It's your least heat sensitive color because that cobalt will melt at a very high temperature compared to something like yellow, which has cadmium in it. And when I say heat sensitive, that means that the glass will end up boiling or bubbling when you bring it up to such a high heat or try to heat it up very quickly. And that's a bit different from atmospheric sensitive glass that will change its color or its appearance depending on the amount of oxygen you put into the flame. And now that I'm done gathering up a nice glob here, I'm gonna use my marver just to shape it a little bit before I add another color. And that's just to speed up the gathering process. You wanna be careful not to fold the glass over and create any air pockets. I'm gonna punty up to this small rod of double Mai Tai from Tag Glass. And it looks like an amber red right now, but it's one of those atmospheric sensitive colors. It's full of silver. As it heats up and cools in an oxidated atmosphere, it will change to a nice purple color. And then as it goes through the kilning process, that can also cause it to react and deepen that purple even more. And I'll be sandwiching it in between another section of blue stardust to create a multicolored tube. Now, when it comes to making multicolored tubes, I do prefer the coil pot method over the solid blowout. With the coil pot, the colors will stay more in place as you're heating it up and blowing it out. Whereas with the solid color blowout, as we melt it back, since the colors are made of different uh, materials, they have different densities, and you'll actually get some of them mixing together. However, if I'm just doing a single color, then I will go with the solid blowout. It might be a little faster and it just seems a little easier. You know, you're less likely to trap air as you're gathering up the glass versus creating coils. But now that I have it all gathered up, I'm gonna keep rotating and heating it and melting it down into a nice egg shape. And that's just a good shape to blow out a nice bubble. And that does help a little bit to shape your bubbles before you blow them out. But overall, they're always gonna turn out into spheres. So it's not gonna make the biggest of difference. So even if you shape it into a square before you blow it out, it's still gonna blow out into a sphere. It always blows out symmetrically in all directions. If you are curious on how to make a square, I did recently release a video on making a square mold out of graphite. It was episode seven of Glasssmith. I'll make sure to link that in the description. Here I'll go ahead and add some more of that double Mai Tai. Now the thicker you make that gather, the harder it's going to be to blow it out. Now I had a commenter ask if I was based in the U.S. and if I would take on an apprentice. Now I'm honored that you'd ask to apprentice under me. I'm thinking that's probably more for a very local thing, but unfortunately with my schedule, I just know I wouldn't have enough time. However, depending on how the channel goes, I was thinking if I do end up with a larger audience, then I might end up doing a online apprenticeship kind of program. And I haven't really fleshed out the details yet, but it would be kind of simple, something along the lines of sending you some glass to work with, along with a specialized video of what I want you to make it into, Maybe some solid spheres or some hollow colored tubing like I'm making right now. And once you're done working on them, you'd send them back, but then you can keep the remaining glass for yourself. And then I'll take them and work them down some more into some merchandise to sell. And that's pretty much how apprenticeships work. You know, you learn the trade while you help me out, and then you can also benefit with that extra glass. That's just kind of a rough idea. You have to let me know what you think of that if you're interested. So I've been heating up this gather of glass and pushing air into it. 
causing that bubble to expand all the way through. Now I'm planning to make another jar here. This is a good technique for any projects that require bubbles. To turn it into a tube requires an additional step, which I'll demonstrate next. But here I just wanted to show you what kind of results you'll get from using multiple colors with that solid blowout. You can see some of that beautiful purple showing up on the bottom there. And that's from the silvered glass, the double Mai Tai from Tag. But then you'll notice the colors didn't end up as even as the coil pot. They were a little bit wavy. I mean, it's not as bad an effect, but if you're definitely going for straighter lines, then I would go with the coil pot. And I'll go ahead and finish it up with my jacks, a little bit of a flaring to open it up and a flattening with the paddle on the back. Then one more quick demonstration here to show you how to pull out that sphere from the solid color blowout into a tube. And I was thinking before I gather up the color to do the blowout, it might be a good idea to create a little coil pot. So I'll be doing a little bit of that coil pot technique, but if you want to see that in more detail, you should check out the last video I uploaded. And this will just help me blow out more of the color and less of the tube. And it can quicken it up a little bit because I don't have to worry about putting less heat back here as it'll just end up blowing out this color anyway. Real quick, if you've liked what you've seen so far, go ahead and hit that like button. Also make sure to turn on notifications for my channel. That way it'll notify you when I upload a new video. It looks like a little bell next to where the subscribe button is. And don't forget you can leave a comment asking a question about glass blowing and lamp working or a suggestion for a future video. Coming up, I'll be doing a video about how to get a torch installed and running at your own studio. Now I've talked a lot about the process and what you need to set one up, but I've never done a demonstration of one yet. And then the project after that will be a marine or a marini video. That's a pretty cool uh, traditional technique that allows you to create the same pattern over and over and over again by creating it on a large scale, pulling it out and cutting off little chips. It's very similar to Christmas cookies. Those cookie rolls that have the Christmas trees or the snowmen all the way through the roll and you just cut the cookies off and bake them. It's a very similar process. And normally it's very hard to duplicate something again and again in glass. But with this technique, you can get nearly the same image every single time. And now to finish it up, you can use gravity to slump it down into a tube. But here I'm going to attach uh, the same color rod I've been working with. And then that will allow me to pull it out very quickly and then melt in the end. So you won't notice the rod was there. Now I'm pulling it apart very slowly, but very steadily, and I'm reheating it, trying to keep that heat very even to allow for an even pull out. Very quickly, it's gone from a sphere or a bubble out to a tube. And now to open up the end of it, this is a safer method. I've blown out a very thin bubble, and now I'm just picking some glass off with a scrap rod until it gets thin enough that it just tears open in the flame. Now here's a quick look of everything you saw today. And I think it's looking good, especially that purple. I really like that color. The effect of the Mai Tai is just really amazing. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. Thanks for watching the Matt Yasa channel. And as always, have a great day.